It's that time of the week again, vocab time. And I decided to return to one of my favorite websites, GRE Hotline, to do a vocab video. Now, yes, this is targeted mainly at those studying for the GRE and learning amazing new vocab for that test, but this is really for anyone who wants to learn new English language vocabulary, which includes me. I may not know every single word that comes up, but I phrased it, as you can see from the title, as a test. You can test yourself and grade your score. Just for fun, it's all about learning new words. Ultimately, if you score zero in the test, but learn all the new words, I will be a very happy tutor. You will be able to compare yourself to others by looking at the percentage above the word and see how many other students did not know the word or did know the word. And without further ado, let's get to this amazing vocab. Let's start straight away with the word gist. So gist here is the general meaning that you're trying to get across. Most often you would say it in the context of oh, the gist of the speech was, or the gist of his message is, it's like the condensed, shortened version of the main message behind something. I'm very confident with that. And then it tells us that 72% of people knew that, leaving 28% of people who didn't. Next one, inveterate. A bit harder, inveterate. I'm gonna go with deep-rooted, long-established. I think it's linked to the word veteran, someone who's done something for a long time. So if you're inveterate, you've done it for quite a long time. It's quite deep-rooted and long-established. But I'm only about 80% sure. I'm not 100% sure on that one. It was correct, and only 53% of people got that. I'm not surprised it was a bit harder. To unearth something is to discover it. He unearthed some treasure. He unearthed a gem of wisdom to discover something, bring it to light. Very sure about that. It's like you're taking it out of the earth. It was buried and now you're unearthing it. Epithet. An epithet is a nickname that someone gives to you. So here, that would be adjective, I guess. It's not the first thing I think of when I think epithet. I think of a nickname, like Trump gives epithets to certain people. That's like a nickname for that person. I guess you could think of it as an adjective that would go in front of their name. That is one way to think of it. Ah, only 37% of people got that. That was really hard. Insinuate, to suggest something that's kind of rude about someone. He insinuated that she had never left the house. She insinuated that he was lazy. If you make a suggestion, you don't come out with it overtly or explicitly. You make a suggestion and usually it's negative about someone. So that would be suggest unpleasantly. Insinuate. 67% of people got that. Preternatural. It kind of means uh, above and beyond, like not normal, like really impressive, almost not quite supernatural, but really impressive, really unusual. So not normal or usual. Think of natural being what's normal and then supernatural being way beyond impossible for it to be natural. So preternatural somewhere in between, not usual, but maybe not supernatural. Hmm, 66% of people got that. Deluge is a flood. To be deluged is to be flooded. It doesn't always have to be water, but just in general, if you're flooded, you're deluged. I think probably most people will get that. Yeah, mm, 60%. Decry. Decry is to condemn or speak badly about something. She decried his angry politics. That would be disapprove of. I think that's the closest. Yeah, to decry something is to disapprove of something. I'm guessing a lot of people might get this wrong. Hmm, 64%. Scent is the smell. The perfume has a lovely scent. A lot of people would get that. 84%. Perch. Perch is like a position. A bird might have a perch on a tree. It's like a position that you nestle into and you kind of stay in. 
Yeah, there you go, to take up a high position. You're standing on your perch lecturing me. Why are you doing that? 70%. Acclaimed, celebrated, the acclaimed author, accomplished or celebrated. That would be, I guess, closest is welcomed with shouts and approval. Again, I haven't seen these words before. And uh, yeah, it's fun just to go through them. It might seem like I have, but I honestly haven't. I'm just ad-libbing. I might get many of these wrong. Who knows? Acclaimed. There we go. A figurehead. It's like a leader, a symbolic leader. It's like the figure at the head of an organization. That would be... Okay, well, they've gone with the literal interpretation. So ships used to have a figurehead, if you can picture it, like Pirates of the Caribbean, like at the front of the ship, it'd be like a statue, usually of a woman. That would be the figurehead. That's probably where the phrase came from. But yeah, carved image on the prow of a ship. Maybe fewer people will get that because they don't know the literal interpretation. Yeah, only 57% of people. Might. There's a little bug, isn't it? Okay, well... They're saying it's a very small amount, a portion or a particle. I thought it was a little bug, but a mite also makes sense in the sense of a small amount of something, just a mite of salt. Yeah, ostracism. That I believe comes from an ancient Greek expression where they used to vote on these things. I think they were ostraca or something. They would vote the name of someone onto these shells, ostraca, and then the person with the most votes, so to speak, would become a pariah. They'd be sent out of town and banished into exile. And so that would be ostracism. They'd be forced to leave or shunned. So you ostracize someone by pushing them out of your group and not looking at them. So that would be to shut out from society, refuse to meet or talk. Veneer. Veneer is the surface of something. It's not what's actually true. It's the facade. It's an image you put out, but it's not actually true. She puts on a good veneer, but she's angry inside. The surface appearance covering the true nature. Veneer. Nostrum. Ooh, that's the first one I would struggle on a little bit. I think a nostrum is like a core belief or a mantra, but I'm not quite sure. Okay, it's not that. Hmm, closing device in Parliament to end a debate. I think that's, that doesn't sound right. Quack remedy. I think it rings a distant bell from my GRE studies from before. That it might be the first one, a quack remedy, an untested cure. I don't know, honestly. That would be my guess. It rings a bell. Quack remedy, untested cure. Like it's someone's belief that something will solve something. Oh, that's just your nostrum, but it's not actually true. Let me check that. Boom, got it. And only 38% of people got that right. I, I kind of thought a nostrum was a belief, but I guess that also makes sense because it's like you believe you've got a cure to something, but it's not actually true. So yeah, happy with that one. To inveigh, very similar to decry, to argue against something, to be against something. I always get them mixed up with inveil, with like an L-E at the end instead of a H, but that's to coerce or coax someone into doing something. To invey with a H at the end, it's like <laughs> angry. You're attacking something. There you go, to attack verbally, to invey. It's got that angry H at the end. Drowsiness is being sleepy. That would be feeling asleep or half asleep, being drowsy, often with drink or tiredness. Suspect a lot of people will get that, 84%. Chastisement. To chastise someone is to tell them off. So to receive chastisement is to receive a talking to, like a punishment verbally. That would be, there you go, a punishment. It's typically verbal. There you go. There's also a word chastening. That's a very good word, actually. You might say after you were humbled, oh, that was a very chastening experience. It's like if you lose a race that you're expected to win, you go, oh, this is a very chastening outcome. It's kind of, think of it as a punishment or as like, ah, I'm a bit more humble now. I, I thought I would win that, but I didn't. I'm chastened. Pyra is a fire. Or I guess it looks like a large pile of wood for burning. I thought it was a fire. 
because you've got pyromaniac, someone who likes to start fires. Anyway, there you go. Interim is between two things. Like inter is between, like between nations is international. So between periods of imperial authority, interim, between leaderships. Hmm. I guess as an installment, that doesn't really fit. Last piece of cloth. Positive, certain, arbitrary. No, as an installment, I guess that's not really how I would phrase it at all. As an installment, I guess it kind of means like not the full amount of something, not like a full leader, just a partial leader. I wouldn't have phrased it like that, but that's what they're going to go for, 62%. Weak on diet, that's quite hard. Or is it recondite? I don't know how to pronounce it, but anyway, recondite. Uh, I think that means like obscure knowledge, like recondite. I think something like that, obscure knowledge, which would fit with little known abstruse, because that's what abstruse means, obscure knowledge, little known knowledge. Disguise is close, but I'm pretty sure it's this. Yeah, only 39% of people got that. Maudlin is sad or down or thinking about negative things quite a lot. There you go, sentimental in a tearful way. I guess emotional might be a bit closer to it rather than necessarily being depressed. Emotional, tearful, maudlin. Asperity. Ooh, I don't know off the top of my head, but to cast aspersions is to attack someone. So asperity, I think it rings a bell, it's bitterness, something like that. Which would be the last one, harshness, bitterness, ill temper, irritability. I knew it was something negative from the phrase to cast aspersions is to attack someone. So asperity meaning like bitterness, irritability, ill temper. Definitely not the others. So sometimes if you don't know a word, if you know linked words, you can still get it right, which is what I rely on a lot, as you can see. Middling, average, that's quite easy. Fairly good, but not very good. I'm guessing most people will get that. Oh, 51%. Gloat to be arrogant, to revel in your victory and rub it in. There you go, to overlook at, to look at with selfish delight. I don't know what the over bit is, but anyway, to look at with selfish delight, you glory in yourself, you're arrogant, gloating over the people who lost. 61%, to eschew, to avoid, to not do something. He eschewed his duties, he avoided them. I always think of it as like that face when you're chewing on something horrible, it's like, it's true. You don't want to do it. You don't like it. You want to avoid it. Punitive is very much linked to the word punishment. Punitive punishment. It's a great way of remembering it. Doing pretty well so far, but it's not about me. It's about you and you learning new words. So to assuage is to make someone feel better. He assuaged her anger by telling her it would all be okay. To make something painless, I guess that's not a great way of saying it, but to assuage, to make something softer and easier, and usually to assuage her fears, to assuage his emotions. That's the kind of context you normally hear it in. Extricable. Hmm, don't know that one. Extricable. I guess it means, or it's linked to, to extricate, to bring something out of something, to free something. Extricable, well, that would make sense. Something that can be freed, something that can be extricated is extricable. I wouldn't have known that without knowing extricate. 55% makes sense. To placate, very similar to assuage, but placate is to calm someone down. Placate, linked to the word placid, like a placid lake, to placate, to soothe, pacify, or calm. Invincible, unstoppable, can't be defeated. Very famous word. Too strong to be defeated. He is invincible. 
Makes you wonder what Vince means. I guess it might mean defeat, like you can't be defeated. You can't be defeated, but I don't know. Almost certainly a Latin origin. I could look that up afterwards. But anyway, invincible is undefeatable. Abeyance. Something that's kind of linked to the word interim. It's not happening at the moment. It might come back. It's in abeyance. It's suspended action. It's not happening permanently, but it's kind of temporarily waiting. It's in abeyance. You can think of it as like a ship in a bay. It hasn't set out to sea, but it's just waiting. It's in abeyance. Atavistic. Great word. Kind of meaning like going back to an older time, like savage. Something reverting to an earlier type. Like an atavistic shout is like a caveman shout. You'll bring back your inner caveman or your inner child. Atavistic, going back to an earlier, more savage state. Only 46% of people got that. Blandishment, I believe, is something to corrupt someone, giving them blandishments, but it might be to flatter them. I'm not quite sure. There we go. To flatter them or to coax them. Could be either of those, really. But yeah, a blandishment is... I guess, a phrase intended to flatter someone, to make them feel good about themselves, but you're kind of lying, you're misleading. By oozing praise that he was the best senator ever, he was offering a blandishment, flattery. A rabble is like uh, an uncontrolled crowd. Kind of linked to the word babble, like lots of noise, uncontrolled, rowdy, rude. It's a crowd that you can't really control, a rabble, often maybe that might riot, a mob crowd. Imperviousness, linked to invincibility. If you can't be touched, really, you're impervious. You can't be brought down. You are invulnerable. Nothing can really touch you. Impenetrable. If you're tarnished, you're definitely not impervious. It means someone's got to you. You've maybe been wounded or smeared or dirtied or tarnished. You're not perfect anymore. You're not pure. You're tarnished. You've lost the brightness. Maybe your clothes were lovely when you set out in the morning, but by the time you got back, they were tarnished. They've lost their brightness. A relapse is when you have given up a behavior maybe and then after a while some time's gone by and then you went back to that behavior so a relapse of alcoholism maybe you've given up alcohol for a long time and then you've had a relapse you've drunk one night you've lapsed into doing something again re again as they've said you've fallen back again grouse i think I think that that's an animal, but I think it also means to complain, to grouse about something. You don't hear that word very much anymore. Complain or grumble, to grouse about something. A bit easier to spot with the grumble thing because it begins with GR as well. That's not used very much, to grouse, not in Britain anyway. A gust, a gust of wind, an outburst of feeling, sudden rain, wind, yeah. A deluge, we've seen that one already. Great flood. To redeem yourself is you've done something wrong, but you want to make it up to someone or maybe make it up to society. So you redeem yourself by doing a good deed, maybe. Or you might have heard the expression to redeem a voucher. Someone's paid the money to a company so that you have a voucher and you're going to get that value back by redeeming the voucher in exchange for the goods from the company. To get back to the level terms, to be redeemed to get back by payment or compensation. To glean, to glean some insights. It's to find stuff out, maybe by investigation. Gather facts in small quantities. Yeah, you don't discover everything in one go, you just gleaned some facts. To coerce, like the word coax, is to encourage someone, Almost not quite force them, but strongly encourage them with incentives to do what you want them to do. To coerce, 
co is like together. So you together with the person is getting them to do it. They're not doing it on their own. You're compelling them. It's not quite using physical force. You wouldn't say that's coercion. It's more like when you're using strong arguments or incentives. To divulge, to give away. He divulged state secrets. Gave away state secrets. To make known something that should have been secret. An aberration, meaning something that's not normal and it's not right. I guess you could think of it as linked to the word error. An error is not normal. It's not what was supposed to happen. So an aberration is like, that's not right. That is straying away from what is normal, as I've said. It's an error, and it's an error that's happened that shouldn't have happened. Superfluous. I love that word. It means not necessary. Super, as we saw earlier, means beyond, like the word supernatural. So beyond what is needed is superfluous. Superfluous. We don't need it. Even the word itself, the way it sounds, it's overly fancy for such a simple word, very much linked to unnecessary. The word itself and how long it is, is superfluous. It's more than is needed or wanted. All that effort was superfluous because he'd already won. Let's do a couple more before I end. And if you like this way of challenging yourself, again, please do leave a like and leave a comment. Dulcet, sweet tones, sounding lovely. The dulcet voice of the choir singer filled the room with pleasant sounds melodious like a melody, harmonious. Another reason to maybe call it a day fairly soon is I am on an incredible streak of right answers and I don't really want to give that up anytime soon. So while I haven't yet got one wrong, I might end it after this one. Cursory is a quick glance at something, usually with that word glance. He gave it a cursory look. She gave it a cursory glance. They didn't read it properly, they didn't look at it properly, they just looked at it very briefly. Very quickly, in a hurried way. Ooh, I almost would have fallen for that, and I would have got the last one wrong. But actually, temporary and fleeting would be a better way of saying it. Quick is true, but it's not so much about the speed, it's about how fleeting it was. It's about how you didn't spend the right amount of time. So not necessarily quick or hurried. I mean, the meaning is very similar. If you do something in a temporary way that's fleeting, you are kind of doing it quickly or hurriedly. The underlying meaning isn't necessarily doing something fast as it is doing something without the necessary time that it takes. So not giving it your all, just being cursory. Very, very tempted. I almost clicked on B. I'm going to go with D and I'm kind of nervous now because this is my last one. So I kind of really want to get it right. Oh, that is absolutely hilarious. I got the last one wrong. Cursory, quick or hurried. Temporary fleeting, a cursory glance. Ouch, that really hurts. Cursory, quick. I mean, it's the same thing. Quick, hurry, temporary, fleeting. What's the big difference? Quick. Uh, oh, well, you get the idea. You know what cursory is now. I'm cursed to have gotten that one wrong. Anyway, all of them apart from that last one. If you got them all right, you beat me. But otherwise, check out your score and you can even let me know what you got in the comments. I hope you've learned a word because then my job is done. Have a wonderful day. If you made it all the way to the end, you are a true vocab superstar and a real fan, so I thank you. Leave a comment so that I know that you made it all the way to the end. And of course, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.